Hey guys. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Almost On There podcast. I have some exciting news. I wouldn't we call it exciting. Oh. Oh no, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't know I was going with that. No, we are matching. Yes, that was that took precedent. And all of the exciting news, that was on the top of my list, dude. Um, yes. And we're both exhausted because we had to get up for work like way earlier than normal today. Nice. And I think we're both drinking coffee right now. We are, dude. It's like we're co like We're together. Yeah, but so we're not. Cute. And there's a, there's a good reason why we're really not together right now. Like better than we've ever had before, there's a reason for us not being together. That's true. Breaking news, guys. We're broadcasting from the belly of the beast today. At least I am. I was like, are we in a whale? <laughs> and then I realized that's not what you meant. No, I meant finally, after all this time, I have contracted COVID. Why are you saying finally? Because, I mean, like, did we see it coming? I mean, for sure. we for sure, it's we, you. For sure, we for sure saw it coming. You know what I mean? That's like, true. I'm shocked that it took, what has it been, eight months, I think? Almost nine. Almost nine months. I'm shocked that it took almost nine months to get here because I do live in a house with four other just like distinguished, slightly attractive gentlemen. And the fact that it took almost nine months, we basically could have had a baby in this time. Why are you talking about your roommates being slightly attractive? I'm just saying it's a, it's, it's a fact, you know, like we don't, like, is it necessary to the story? Potentially, potentially not, okay. you know? Sure. But I'm just throwing it out there because we have finally all tested positive. And it was something that, you know, we're not surprised. It is a bummer, but we're definitely not surprised. Um, but we're yeah. dealing with it this week. Yeah. So let's go back to, um, so Thanksgiving was Thursday. John's birthday was Friday. You wake up Saturday morning. Things are not okay. Things are not okay. So we have this, you know, every, every roommate situation has like a roommate group chat, right? So we were like throwing yeah. it into the roommate group chat. We all woke up around the same time. And uh, I don't know who it was first, but someone's like, hey, guys, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I woke up with a fever. I got some back aches. Not, uh, not some great signs. I'm going to seclude myself. Probably get tested today just in case because it feels like the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, another roommate pops off chat. Dude. I also have those symptoms. Oh my God. Meanwhile, I'm reading this in my bed downstairs and I'm like, I have a fever. My muscles are sore. This, this doesn't seem good, dude. It feels like we're all waking up with the same symptoms. So yeah. we basically realized that all of us have the same exact symptoms. And the next thing we had to do was get tested, you know? So we got tested and waited for the results to come back and all positives. Boom, 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 boom. Terrible. So you guys Pretty did early. the rapid test, right? We did. Yeah. We did the rapid test, tried to find out as quickly as possible. Mine wasn't the rapid test. Um, so mine came back a little bit later, but you mm. know what? But like, you're like, everyone they, else tested positive. So exactly. Exactly. Like if three of my roommates test positive, and we all have the same exact symptoms. Like I pretty much know what I'm getting. And then when my test came in, it was positive. So yeah, it's finally here. We're battling COVID dude. So that was Saturday. You didn't feel well. How'd you like, what is the worst that it got? Was it Saturday or was it Sunday? So there's two things I want to say here. So first is even among the people we know, and we, we ended up spreading it to like a few other people, which I will mm -hmm. get to in a minute. Uh, among all the people that we know that got what we know to be our strand, right? Sure. Uh, the symptoms varied. The symptoms were different. We're kind of on different time schedules. People experience different things. So that was kind of interesting. So it's like not been the most uh, consistent, I guess, progress line for all of us. Right. Um, but what we can say is that the first two days were, were like the bad ones. Those are the ones where we all felt like we had the flu. And my personal least favorite part, my personal most intense, most intense symptom was the muscle aches. Like I felt, Ooh. it just feels like the flu, you know, and <clears throat> you're hot and you're sore and you can't move and you don't really want to do anything. You're just depleted of energy and you just like need like a full body massage because mm -hmm. every muscle in your body hurts. And I feel like totally. that to me was the worst part. I had a small cough. I still have a small cough now. My throat has not hurt for a second. Like my throat's been fine. Um, Interesting. Okay. But my, I, we have a friend who got the same, got it at the same time we did. And he like, that's his biggest symptom. He said he has such a sore throat. It feels like there's a golf ball in there and he can't even swallow without it stopping from hurting. Did that friend also have fever and muscle aches? Do you know? Um, yes, but not as bad. Mostly fever, I guess, is what I'm asking. Because it's interesting. Yeah. It seems like if you have the fever, that's a big sign. 
Oh yeah, yeah. The fever is one thing we all shared for sure. We all shared the muscle aches. Just the uh, the variety of how bad mm-hmm. it was has changed a little bit. Um, but like one of my roommates in my house, he uh, has an extremely bad cough, and his lungs were hurting the second day. Like his oh. lungs. I mean, he vapes a lot, so like you know that could have something to do with it. But I I don't I don't feel my lungs. You know, like so my favorite thing is when you talk about your roommates. I try to figure out in my head which one you're talking about. Couldn't figure know, it try, out there. I feel like I've talked about them enough. I could just say names on this podcast, yeah. but I just, I would just feel like if you don't know them, I'm just going to say my roommate, you know? Totally. Um, is everyone feeling, everyone in your house? I know you said, and we'll go into like a couple of people have gotten it from you guys, you think, or they gave it to you. I don't know. Or, dude, um, what a plot twist. Yeah. Is everyone in your household starting to feel better? Yes. So okay. after day two, day three popped in and, and now it in. just feels like we're on the tail end of a cold ever since. Like we haven't been I able to believe. completely get rid of it, but it's like right. a little sniffle and a little cough and that's all all of us have right now. Okay. Um, I can't believe you waited through the weekend to tell me. You didn't tell yeah. me until work on Monday, until the end of our work day on Monday. True. I like mean, we were like defense, shooting sleeping. the shit. And- we were. We yeah. Were. yeah. Uh, I just decided to wait. I was like, it's going to be a better uh, impact if I just wait till a meeting and I tell everyone at once, you know? True. I'm all about the surprise. Oh, the surprise factor. Um, okay. And so then you said that a couple of people, you know, have gotten it. One of which was someone you saw on Thanksgiving. Luckily right. you had a small Thanksgiving. Talk about that. Right. So, uh, for Thanksgiving, I saw my sister and my sister's boyfriend, uh, the just whole the two family- of them. Just the two of them. Okay. So they were out of town and, or their family was out of town. They were making a little Thanksgiving dinner and they invited me over. And I was like, perfect. My sister totally. has already gotten COVID. So she oh, yes. has the antibodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't feel any symptoms that day. So I stayed there. I stayed the night there. I went home. But apparently from what I've heard from some people that sometimes you are almost the most contagious right before you show symptoms. Like you can still spread it right before you yourself oh, are yeah. feeling those symptoms. So uh, apparently that happened to them. And my sister's boyfriend woke up a few days later with a fever. I checked in with my sister. She sent me my birthday present through Amazon. So a couple of days later, I was like, Oh, it's here. I'm going to call her, see what's up. And she answers the phone. She says, Hey, say hi to Nick. He's sick in bed. And I was like, <laughs> and you hadn't told fault. her, like, <laughs> why didn't you tell them? I guess you were thinking my sister already had it. She has the antibodies. That was the day we got tested actually. Oh, oh, it wasn't. So, okay. For the day I got my results. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I told him, I mean, he, he may have it. Uh, but also, you know, if you date my sister, you got to beat COVID, you know? So we're going to figure that out okay. one way or another. Um, what were you doing on like Wednesday and Tuesday? Like, who did you go see? So that's the mystery. That's the okay. mystery we're all trying to figure out because the good news is we all woke up with the same symptoms at the same time. So it appears right. that however we got it, we got it together at the same mm-hmm. time, right? Um, but the week prior, we didn't really do anything. Like hmm. the only d- downside is I'm the only one working from home. So it's, I'm, we're kind of shocked as to how, we, we really don't know how we got it. We didn't go to anything specific. Like you didn't go out and eat on Tuesday or Wednesday? Um, you know, what's weird is like on Monday, everyone went out to eat, but I stayed home. And then oh. on Tuesday, I went out with one of my roommates, but the other two stayed home. So like we were never anywhere hmm. all together, which is, was very interesting. So it is. that's confusing. I, we don't know how it, how it happened. It could have been anyone. It could have been at work. It could have been at the grocery store. It could have been going out to eat. You know, it could have been getting beers at a restaurant. It totally. Been, it could have been any of those things. Um, but I mean, I think we're just like, obviously lucky that it's been a mild case, but also Definitely. it's what seems to be the case for like young people our age, you know, like the people that I know have had it say pretty much you're, you're kind of sick for a couple of days. Like it feels like a flu. It's like definitely not a joke. And then after that, you just kind of get over it. So, you know, I'm super happy that it's like, you know, fine and you're feeling fine, but I right. don't think anyone listening to this should take it as like, it's no big deal. Like right. it's been not fun for you. Oh, we have to get into the taste and smell thing in a moment. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Like it's been not fun for you, but like, I think, I don't know. Other people should still consider it serious because if you happen to live at home with your mom and you got See, it from friends and then went home, like that's scary. And that's why I think we have not really been as worried as others in the past because we know we don't live with old people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't live with anyone but ourselves. And when you look at the numbers, like just, it, it just appears that people our age 
just speaking for our age, are going to be fine for the most right. part. You know what I mean? Right. And There's like the, the rare that, case that they're not. But Exactly. But it's super rare. Um, all the, like I do know a significant amount of people that have gotten COVID and it seems to be a very similar story than us. That being said, you can't really predict what it's going to do to everyone, which I think is the scariest part. You can't predict for sure what it's going to do as you climb up that age ladder, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think the fact that I don't live with my mom or anything like that just makes it so much easier. Yeah. And that you um, didn't do Thanksgiving with your family. Oh my God. I cannot imagine. Like I would, I can't, I, yeah. that would have killed me. You know, we were right. supposed to have Thanksgiving with both of my grandmas and like oh my they're in their seventies, I think. So like, I, I'm, I'm just so glad that they canceled. I, yeah. I had no idea, you know, I wasn't even feeling symptoms at that time. And it's like, what a bullet dodged. Right. Um, so let's talk about your taste and smell. I yeah, literally so, feel like a journalist, like interviewing someone about this seriously. Uh, yeah. What day did it go? Was it when you woke up on Saturday? Um, so it was actually the second day after the symptoms mm-hmm. were kind of intense for two days already. Then my smell and taste went away. So like later on Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Like a later on Sunday thing, um, which was kind of interesting. And Super. we'd seen we'd seen all these things where people had lost their taste and smell. And then to me, it didn't seem strange at first because when you're sick with a cold, I feel like you still can't taste anything, you know? Like I can barely taste when I have a cold because your nose is all stuffy and you can't smell and smell affects your taste. So to me, I guess, that, but you can still kind of, I guess so. Yeah. I guess you can still kind of taste, but like I barely. So to me, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, and then like my nose wasn't stuffy anymore and like I could s- smell, smell all the way. Like it doesn't feel like a cold. My nose like is Like you can fine. breathe through it. Yes. But you couldn't smell. Which is what was super weird. So like, we took a shot of tequila, you know, and just to God test things out. I just, just for research purposes, yeah. you know, it's always um, about the research. It could have been water, you know, mm-hmm. it, it could, I have no idea. And then we tried Gatorade could have been water. Uh, milk, That's crazy. Could have been a colder water. Like it was, it was crazy. Like I couldn't taste anything. Wow. And that's come back now. Um, last night I tasted my first pizza. So that was pretty cool. Did so, you have like the full taste? No, 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 no. Okay. But I could kind of, like, I know what it's supposed to taste like. And I was like, kind of getting. You're you know, like, by next week, we might be in business. Exactly. Like I've had well, pizza three times this week just because like, I just want it so bad, dude. And it's like one of the easiest things to get delivered. Um, and just, I'm waiting to taste it. And last night I kind of can. And I was like, it's coming back, baby. We're getting our taste buds back. So, wow. which is a, a quick turnaround, you know, I, some people, a lot of people, I feel like I hear a lot of people are like that lasts for two weeks. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see when it fully comes back for you. And also I hope a lot of people say when it comes back, it's weird. So I hope really? yours is okay. But yeah, people say like when it comes back, they're like, I don't like the taste of that right now. Interesting. And that Interesting. like, it tastes like things are burnt. Oh, it burnt. Mm-hmm. Wow. So. Um, I'm looking forward to that because the taste thing sucks. Like I am hungry, dude. I am, right. like, I can feel my stomach is like not getting food. I've not really been eating that many meals every day just because I'm not, I don't have an appetite. Right. And when you try and force food down, like it's when you can't taste it, I don't know. It just, it's weird. Like it's yeah. weird. You know, it's the weirdest thing. I, it's super strange. I have a friend, one of my good friends from home. I found out on Thanksgiving, I've been around her and, uh, over a month. So probably two. Um, but I got a text from one of our other friends saying so-and-so has COVID and she'd been staying with her dad and her stepmom. Um, and so I'm like, Oh my God, is she okay? And she's like, she seems okay. She doesn't have a lot of symptoms. And then the dad and the stepmom tested negative. Wow. Really? And so she's been quarantined in her room at her parents' house, just can't leave. Uh, But what's weird is she's like, I have zero symptoms except my appetite is so low. She's like, I can taste things, but nothing sounds good. See, I think that's what's interesting is I don't know why different people experience it such wildly different ways. Yeah. You know, like the fact that some people's throat was the most intense thing to them. Totally. Like that's something I, none of us experience. Like, I don't, I don't get that. It's, it seems to be so weird for everyone. And that's weird. That sucks. You know, it's just like, Make up your mind, COVID. I feel like if COVID's a girl, you know what I mean? COVID's for sure a woman. That's a lie. COVID Whoa. is a dude causing mass destruction and not caring who's in its path. I feel like COVID is so That might just be like, kind of a female quality, though. 
<laughs> I mean, that could just be an evil person quality. But I just feel True. like COVID's got to be a chick, dude. She's, like, powerful. Everyone's scared of her. Like, every time you think that, like, you don't need her, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get you when you're least And we don't need you her. Know? No, but, like, that you, yeah. she, that's why she comes in your life, dude. Girls come when you don't want to need them. I just feel like there's a lot more to dig into that statement. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you're making no sense. <laughs> I'm taking that back. Okay. I was like, that relationships find you when you don't look for them. I don't know. I just feel like I'm salty right now at COVID. Yeah, and you I'm are. salty right now at a lot of different things. Are you salty so. right now at women? No, I'm just salty, you know? I General actually- check in. How's your mood? <laughs> <laughs> according to my spotify wrapped i'm a mess right now <gasps> okay yeah so we're gonna get to the balls deep question but it's gonna be later in this okay, episode okay. i really need to dive into your wrapped because i'm worried about, about your spotify wrapped no about you <laughs> oh about me your oh, music is so sad depressing yeah dude I- and here's the thing i love depressing music like i just mm-hmm. really do it's like kind of a staple in like who i am a little bit Um, But when I was going through my Spotify wrapped playlist, because like there's your top five, which are already depressing. And then you get the whole playlist added to your Spotify. That's like, I don't know, a hundred and something songs of everything you've listened to. Guys, it's, it's, it's a mess down there. Can (laughs) you read me your top artists and your top songs, the the top fives first, and then I'll read you mine. Absolutely. And then Um, we can actually go through the full playlist. Yeah, it's. It's a good one. So I, first of all, I just love Spotify for doing this. You know, I feel like Me they're too. so smart, you know, like I know we're not supposed to talk about that that much, but like, I just love Spotify. I just like, they're so geared to music. They're so in tune with like people whose, whose music like makes their personality. And mm-hmm. I, I just love that about them. You know? Also, did you get a message from Mike? Mike? Was that Starka? Starka? Oh, no. He messaged me and said thank you to us for like all the positivity that we've given him in 2020. And um, he sent me his top podcast was ours. He listened to 47 nice. episodes this year. Wait, wait, so how many? 47. Nice. Which is probably all that we've done. That's like this all year. of them. <laughs> yeah. And then Mike, you're my guy. he listened to nine episodes in one day. We were his top binge as well nine in one day yeah so he said I'd, thank you uh, and john for almost on air it's been the positivity we all needed in 2020 so many laughs to keep my spirits up during this time thank you mike that mike, like made my like whole day six hours of erica and john in one day i'm not even I'm sure so i'm so sorry yeah. yeah dude thank you yeah i did see actually a couple of those where we're like <laughs> i mean I don't want to brag here, dude, but we're like a lot of people's at least top two. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Um, anyway, give me your top five artists. Yes. So top five artists. Number one was Chelsea Cutler. Um, He's on my you know, list Which too. I didn't think was going to be my number one, but like, I'll take it. Like, also, I, that means you're like really sad. Her music <laughs> is, huh. whoa. Yeah, I did. I tried sometimes to like go through Chelsea Cutler's songs and find some like positive ones. I think there's right. maybe two. Maybe two. Yeah, like lucky and like, yes, it still it feels is. sad. Yeah. 100%. Heaven. No, heaven's a sad song. Never mind. Go ahead. They just all have like good beats to them, you know? Yeah. Um, two, Ban Camino, clearly. Three, Jeremy Zucker. Four, Maroon 5, dude. Of course. Maroon 5 is just a classic. I can never get rid of them in my top because sometimes if I'm on a house cleaning day, you just put on some old school Maroon 5. You know what? I love the newest album too. Like songs about Jane? Yeah, it's just like... No other pop band just touches them. It's just so vibey. It's so, God. Right. And then number five is Love because Love is another one where you can just like put on albums and never press skip. That's a, that's a, uh, his song Dishes is like, (laughs) um, my top five were, can you guess my top one? Um, we're going to go Taylor Swift. It's 100% Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah. My second is Dua Lipa. Third, the band Camino. Nice. Nice. Uh, fourth is Knightley, who I'm obsessed yep. with, so that's not surprising. And my fifth is Chelsea Cutler. Dude, we kind of like twinsies. But you introduced me to both the band Camino and Chelsea Cutler, so thank I, you. I just love them. No problem. Yeah. And also, Knightley is like in my number one song. So my number one song was Sleepless Nights. It's featuring Knightley. Yes. It's by this guy named AOK. Anyways, 
<laughs> the funny thing is like it showed me that that was my most popular song and it tells you when you streamed it the most and it said there was one day i streamed that song 32 times in one day what happened <laughs> oh it was that I was like, day that's a shocker and then i like looked back and i was like i wonder what day that is and then it tells you it was like September, whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense, dude. That was a that rough hits. day. Mm -hmm. That was a okay. rough day. It hits pretty hard. And then I couldn't listen to any of my Spotify rap playlists. I still have not listened to it. It's just like taking me down a dark emotional Ooh. route. I just do not want to touch right now, dude. I okay. don't want to touch it. What are your two through five top songs? Tattoos Together, Love. Great so song. So good. Uh, favorite Place, the all-time low band Camino song. So good. Ah! Yes. Sorry. So good. Uh, <laughs> sad tonight. Chelsea Cutler. Just, you know, so just, John, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, and then uh, come through by Jeremy Zucker. Just, just and that's just, like okay. a, that's just a bop, you know, that's okay. like not, not that sad. Um, I feel like only two of those are okay. Maybe three of them. No, only like two of them are like kind of sad. So I don't think it was too bad. But if you keep going down my full playlist, I'm just like, dude, what, like, what has been going on this year? And then I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, COVID, breakups, you yeah. know, just all yeah. the good things in life that just, like, make you listen to the happiest music ever. So, Which songs do you consider the sad ones on that list? I mean, on that list specifically, uh, mm -hmm. Sleepless Nights is just, like, it just, I don't know why yeah. that song gets me in my feels. It's the but, like, sound of it, too. It's, it's the sound more than the lyrics. And the mm -hmm. lyrics are so good. It might be the lyrics, too. But, like. Some of those sounds, I just feel like just get me. Like sometimes I just feel a song before they even start talking about the lyrics. And I'm just like, I know I'm going to love this song. You know? Yeah. You know those songs that just like get you somehow? Yep. Dude. I think I that's do. what I look for first. Like I need you to establish the vibe before you even start talking to me. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so that one and Sad Tonight is what you consider sad? Yeah. I mean, I feel like Sad Tonight is kind of sad. Well, it's but literally saying, just let me be sad tonight. So Yeah, which I feel like is such my motto. It's like, sometimes I just got to be sad. Just let me be sad. Like, I'll be sometimes. all right, right, you know? Yeah. Tomorrow's um, the day. My top songs are very different from yours. Like, nice. worldly, which I, I guess I makes so. sense. I my first one so. is Physical by Dua Lipa. Dude. Um, so, Physical is in my top songs because it's one of um, my workout songs. So I listened to it when I run, and I was running so much at the beginning of the pandemic. So that's not shocking. Wanna, so how many of your workout songs are in your top? Uh, um, three of my five. Because, I mean, I, I'm glad I didn't work out for a lot of this year. I didn't go to the gym, you know? But I remember there was one year, I don't know if it was last year, but like I went to the gym consistently throughout the entire year. But in a lot of my Spotify rap songs were my gym songs. And I didn't like that because I listen to things at the gym that I never listen to outside of the gym. You know, like I listen to pretty intense, like EDM in the gym, oh. but like way more intense than I would ever listen to. Cause I wanted to hype me up and get me in the mood. And I'm like, lifting mine are thin. all like my heavy pop that I do listen to while they're like my driving, my happy driving and my workout songs are pretty much the same. Really? really? Yeah. It's like heavy pop. Okay. I like, that. um, so then my second song was You Should Probably Just Hang Up by Nightly. Mm, that's a good one. It's a really good one. Uh, my third is Platonic, which is a song that gives me every emotion of like feeling happy and dating someone. Um, mm -hmm. So that's cute. Um, <laughs> and my fourth is Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa, which... Dude, a banger. Just a full banger. And five is Feel Me by Selena Gomez. Which is weird, but it's a workout song. So I think that's why it's on there. I always feel like my top songs, I can't predict. I'm like, really? I listen to that one more than... I'm shocked that Physical is my top song. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Sad Tonight by Chelsea Cutler. But like, I've listened to other Chelsea Cutler songs more than that, I think. You know? It must be that Sad Tonight's on a playlist somewhere that you're also playing. Yeah, yeah. That could so then it gets it. looped in, even if you're not totally paying attention. Yeah, that's probably so. right. That's probably right. Um, also, on my Spotify wrapped, my top genres, right? It was like pop, contemporary country, modern rock. I guess that's probably nightly Dude, is modern rock. Know. My number I four. I what those bands are. I know. Maybe the band Camino is modern rock. Perhaps. My number four is Stomp and Holler. <laughs> I didn't know that was a musical genre. Stomp so, and Holler. Stomp and Holler. And then my, my number five is pop rap. 
which is definitely all of the post Milan that I listened to this year. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. So yeah. how do you go in? I wish, is, is there a way you can go into these songs you listen to and find out what genre it is? I don't think so. Huh? I don't know. Out of all of your Spotify wrapped statistics, which one are you personally most proud of? Proud of? Is that what you asked? Which yeah, I'm most proud of? Yeah. What statistic are you most proud of out of all of them? I am in the 0.5% top Taylor Swift fans. And there's a lot of those. Exactly. That's I mean, why I think it's a big deal. That's a big deal. I'll give you that. That's a huge deal. What huge are you deal. most proud of? Uh, I think, to be honest, my most proud one was I've listened to 1,972 artists. And I just feel like I Pretty discover good. new music a lot. Like I try to... Yeah. Like, you know, they give you the Discover Weekly playlist every Monday of like low-key artists they think you'll like. I listen to that every week. Like I'm always trying to find new artists. And I don't know. That's like my personal thing that I like kind of love, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I had like 384 new artists and I thought that was good. So bravo to you. Thank you. How, do you know how many minutes you listened? Yeah. You know what? My minutes, I feel like I listen all the time and it doesn't compare to everyone else's. I think my minutes are only in like the, I think I, I've have it here somewhere but i'm pretty sure it's only like 48 or 50,000 or something you Which realize like, that 50,000 is 35 days of music right yeah but like yeah. I, when i see people post their minutes i honestly think most people post more than me when i listen when i watch people that post their minutes listened oh when i posted my minutes i was horrified because everyone else had like 10,000 minutes mine's 50,500 <laughs> yeah see so I, I remember you had more than me, so I'm pretty sure mine's under 50. Oh, okay. But still, that's a lot of music. I mean, it's definitely a lot of music. And I listened but, to almost 4,000 minutes alone of Taylor Swift. Like, And I have her albums in my car that I don't yeah. listen to Spotify. <laughs> so, ew. That was a fun But, voice. like, when do you listen? Like, if you're listening to the radio all, every day during the morning, like... Right. You really listen to music all throughout the rest of your day because I feel like I do and you listen to more music than me. Yeah. So I would like work out typically for at least an hour every day. So I'm listening to music then. Um, I've also done a, quite a few road trips this, mm, that's you know, neat. like I've driven to Arizona three times now. I've driven yeah. to Reno once. I've driven to the Bay Area twice. So those really add up. That's um, right. And pretty much when we're done with work, when we're done with our meetings for the day, I turn on music and I listen until I'm done for the day. Got it. Got it. Like four to five hours every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I genuinely like, I know a lot of people uh, like, it's like the thing to post when Spotify wrapped comes out and everyone mm -hmm. posts it. And it's like the thing I love looking at what other people listen to. So like, do I. And people who keep do. posting like no one cares. I'm like, who hurt you? Yeah. Like I genuinely care. Like every single time someone posts a Spotify wrapped, I look at all of your top songs, all of your top. Even artists. if I don't know you very well. Yeah, same. I just want to be like, who are you? Because I feel like what you listen to tells a lot about who you are as a person. And I'm so interested yes. in that. Like, I, I have know a, who you're listening to. Yeah, I have a friend of mine who I thought we were like nothing alike. And her top artists were super similar to mine. And Love I was that. like, wait, we're like the same. Why don't we ever talk about this? Or like the people whose tops are like Frank Sinatra and then Drake and then like all these random um, like just mixes and I love that I love one of my very close friends his top is like My Chemical Romance Frank Sinatra See, probably like, the band Camino like it's so funny those people are amazing to me amazing yeah. I love that so much because usually I have more variety in mine but this year I guess I just did not have much variety I this year you really like were in all that same vein yeah which like yeah. you're staying home there's really not really too much to do like i think normally like party music is a little bit more intense because i'm going to festivals and all this kind yes. of stuff but without any of that like i'm not listening to like rager music all the time you know no no so wow well if you guys did a spotify wrapped please share it with us like tag us in your stories or um just you and, like mike just screenshot it and sent it to me in a dm i want to see them yeah, I'm actually genuinely interested in like yeah. what you're listening to. If you didn't post it, that's fine. DM it to us. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I'm we so literally curious. will go through all of them. Also, show me an artist you listen to that I don't know about. You know, like I'm trying to totally. discover new music. As if you haven't discovered enough. Yeah. Um, John, I have a question for you. I have all the answers. When you give gifts at Christmas, I think we've talked about you and I both don't feel like we're good gift givers, right? Yes. Yes. Do you ever feel like it's a competition? A competition to get 
the it's better hard. gift. You know what? It is hard not to feel that way. And okay. I think that's why it's hard for me to give gifts because it sucks when like you're opening my gift and I got you like these cool socks and then like sure. the next person gets you that one thing you've been talking about for a long time. And I'm like, oh, you know, oh, and they're shoot. like, oh, you know me so well, you got this. Totally. And I'm just like, I dude, I should have thought of that, you know, I should yeah. have thought of that, but I didn't. Um, yeah. So there's a stat that six in 10 Americans see gift giving as a competition. 39% of them want to out gift their siblings. And I <laughs> usually in the past, I have just accepted that I'm not a good gift giver and I would just yeah. get whatever I felt was best, right? Like whatever. But this year, my siblings and I and their significant others all did Secret Santa. Mm. So like, obviously I drew someone and I already bought the gift. We just got our names the other day. I already bought the gift and I think I crushed it this year. And now I'm feeling competitive about it. Nice. Dude, yeah. honestly, I'm stoked for you. I want to see what happens because yeah. similarly to you, my sister is the best gift giver I know. Like she remembers that one thing you said under your breath six months ago about something that would make your day, you mm -hmm. know, or something you saw at a store. She like the minute you say it, she puts it in a compartment and she'll remember that for Christmas. Like she is Dang. the best gift giver. And it's always something personal. It's never like the shiniest, most expensive thing. Right. So I gave up a long time ago on trying to compete against her for gifts. But like when you do get a solid gift, like it's, it's cool to feel like, you know, you're going to make someone happy. You yes. Know? Yes. I know. I'm so, I'm so just not, I think I remember everything about people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to gifts, it's like my mind just goes blank. Yeah, it's hard. It's it, so hard. Yeah, it's so frustrating. But, but <laughs> you froze. Oh, you didn't freeze. You just stopped talking and stopped breathing. I think we both said but at the same time. And we yeah. Were like, I was waiting for you to go. You go uh, ahead. No, but like I've, that's why like it, it, in relationships, I tend to be more of like a sentimental gift giver. For like sure. I make, um, do something cool or do something cool towards our relationship to make it fun and sentimental and personal. Mm -hmm. But that only works in a relationship. Like when it comes to giving my roommates gifts or my family gifts, like I'm stuck. Like I'm I just so think, bad. I think the key is for people like us who like don't know what to do. It's like find something they love. Mm -hmm. Like um, say your roommate loves a show. And then like get them something kind of funny, but also useful from that's like branded that show. So let's just make it easy. I'm sure. buying your Christmas gift. Okay. okay. So taking your formula here, I got to think about some things you love, right? Right. So we definitely got wine. We got Taylor Swift, you know, maybe Maren Morris, a bunch of musical artists. Oh my there. God, Maren Morris there. wasn't on my top artist anyway. Yeah, I was surprised by that. I know yeah. I definitely was. I was looking for that when I saw. No country. Um, nowhere to be found. No um, but yeah, so like wines in there. Um, I know you work out. So like that's something. Um, now where right. do you take that? So like you could go on Etsy and find like a super cool hand painted Taylor Etsy. Swift wine glass. If Dude, I had a Taylor Etsy. Swift wine glass, I would drink out of it every day. Okay. So can you have too many wine glasses though? Cause I feel like wine drinkers get that often. Yeah. But if it's something personalized like that, like don't just get them a clear wine glass. Okay. But, or like one of those wine tumblers that you can like walk around and like take to picnics and stuff. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. So I'll personalize one of those. Okay. Right. So then it takes something you like and we just personalize it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you combine my love for wine and Taylor Swift or wine and like music, like lyrics of something. Right. I'm going to be thrilled. I like that. Okay. There you go. I think that really helps here because I think I'm just going to text you a list of things that like someone likes that I'm trying to get a gift for. And you want me to help you pick? And you got to help me personalize. Sounds great. It, you know, just add the little touch where it's like, ah, oh, he didn't just pick this up on Amazon and ship it to my house. Right. Um, note to the world, if anyone's buying John a gift though, don't base it off his Spotify wrapped because he will cry. So. <laughs> Which is good. Put, I'm down to Don't cry. put sad songs on there. <laughs> Oh my God. I love a gift that makes me cry, to be honest. So, do, do we though? Do we I think I'm also the easiest cry? person in the world to get a gift for because I feel like I make the things I like so well known and I will like anything that is them, you know? That's, that's how I feel about myself as well. It's like, if you get me anything that I remotely like. Perfect. Yeah. I'm like, thrilled. I also don't, I gifts it. are not my love language. So like, 
if you put any thought into it at all, like I, it's so sweet to me. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Sometimes so, I don't even know what to do when it's like too sweet. I'm just like, I could never repay this. Like mm-hmm. it, it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes, you know? You know what? The one thing I will toot my own horn about, I'm mm-hmm. really good at writing cards. Like, dude, like I can express my feelings in a handwritten card so well. I love that. I think it's my superpower. We, we got into this last year that I just, dec- I still don't understand cards. Oh you know? my God, that's right. I forgot about this whole thing. We had a debate. I should mail you a very nice handwritten card. I didn't get you anything for your birthday. <laughs> change my mind. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll change your card. mind with a really nice card that'll bring you to your knees. Dude, I, d- try me. Try me. Okay. <laughs> Convince me that cards are worth it. They're so worth it. I gave a very, very, very nice card to someone earlier, like last month. And I still, you know, I'm like, hey, you still got my card? The answer is yes. <laughs> so that's cool. I do keep all my cards. <laughs> but do you I ever gotta... read them back? Nope, not once. Hmm. Do you still have, John, something we need to talk about? Uh-oh. Before, this is going to be quick before we get to the balls deep question. Okay, okay, okay. Quick. Have you purged? Uh, I have purged a little bit. From, yeah. from the breakup. Sorry, I don't want people to think we're actually talking about you vomiting. <laughs> um, you've gotten rid of some stuff. I thought you meant killing people. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, I've purged. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you've, you've done some filtering through of items. Uh, oh, that kind of purged. Yeah. Um, Wait, so you yeah. answered yes to murdering? Yeah. <sighs> no, no I, uh, I haven't really purged through items. I, I, I'm a, like a hoarder when it comes to that stuff. So like, mm. I, I'll keep everything. To be honest, like, <laughs> like the pictures I had to take off of my wall are literally just leaning against my closet still months later. So like, mm. not like I'm keeping it there for any specific reason. I just like, I'm not going to throw them away. I'm like, right, right, right. I don't know what to do with them. And like, no one's coming over, you know, so. That's true. I guess it'll be more that it comes to a time when you start to like have people over that you're like, I really got, I can't have like this stuff laying around. Right, 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 right. Hmm. So we'll see. TBD. Okay. But no, I've, I'm not purged through things. Okay. Keep us posted. I, I'm like way quick to do that. I'm like, put it all in a bag. Either he gets it or he gets it thrown away. That's all his options. See, that's like, I don't love that. I don't love that. You know? But also that was from like, just my terrible, uh, it's different when it's like, true. you're nice to each other about it. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. When you end up screaming in someone's face, you definitely don't want their stuff at your place anymore. I feel like I always hold on to trying to be the last one to hold like I want to be the last one to hold on you know I don't want to be the guy that like will throw everything in your face like I don't know all right more on that later are you ready for your question of the day I'm so ready I'm so ready okay this one's not that deep um but it'll take some thought John if you had 30 you could FaceTime with any celebrity in the world any celebrity, you had 30 minutes of FaceTime with them. You could ask them whatever you wanted, have whatever conversation you wanted. Who would it be? Ryan, I petitioned for a raise. <laughs> that's what you would choose? I'm kidding. I was like, although maybe that's the most like useful. That's what I mean, dude. You know, give me 30 minutes of your time, dude. That's actually a really good answer. <laughs> I got a pamphlet. I'll let you <laughs> give know. Give me 30 minutes of your time and I will, I'll you will give you. me a raise by the end of this. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ryan um, excluded. Uh, let me think here. Um, any celebrity. That's a good one. Any celebrity. Um, I feel like it would have to be some kind of musical artist. Okay. And I don't know what I would ask them. Um, you don't have to tell me what you would ask them, but just who you think that you could like have a great chat with in 30 minutes. Andy Grammer. 100% Andy Grammer. That's, that's the guy. That's a good one. That is the guy. Because okay. out of all musical artists that I love, Andy Grammer will always be in probably my top three to five musical artists ever. Like and consistently? Be- consistently. And it's not because he's the best musician and I love his music the best, but it's because I love who he is as an individual. I think mm. he is 
such a stand-up guy. I think he is such a role model. I think he talks about things that men go through in his songs in such a genuine way of like wanting to be a good person, but not being perfect, but also being mad madly in love with his wife. And like the way he talks about being pregnant with his kids, like he's I, not I, pregnant. No, I mean, we're pregnant. You know, yeah. how guys say that like we're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I just, I love the way he makes music. Like, I think that there's a couple songs in there about how he often felt like he couldn't, uh, like he would have to choose between his dream and what's going to make him successful. And he couldn't not choose his dream. Right. You know, like he, he didn't know how to do anything else and how hard that was. And I feel like every time I listen to an interview with him, he's just so honest and genuine about that. And he's just so positive and uplifting that like, I love that dude. And I think I could talk to him for an undisclosed amount of time. Right. Lovely. Um, I think that people would expect me to say Taylor Swift, right? But the thing is, she's very, very, very open through like her documentaries and everything. So I feel like I wouldn't necessarily get a ton of new information from her, but- That's fair. Yeah, she's like kind of, you know, she's not going to tell you anything that like isn't in the media outlets. Right. You know? So like, I don't, and I, I mean, would I love 30 minutes with her? For sure. But I thought about this before we started recording and I decided that my choice would be Harry Styles. Ooh. Because I think his brain is one of the more interesting of like artists of our generation. Like there's something happening in there that's like, I can't quite figure out. And I'd really like to know what his take on like everything in my life is. Like I would just be like, here's my life. Can you help me make sense of it? Because you can guarantee it will be a different way of thinking about it than you. Yes, exactly. Have. And I I'd also love, love to talk about like the process of making his album Fine Line because the songs are like so personal, but they're so good. <sighs> Sorry, I'm really worked up. I yeah. also think that we could just like have cocktails and like shoot the shit, you know? Sorry. Yeah, I, I feel like he's got episode. different ways of thinking about things. And like you can tell he's got an opinion on everything, but at the same time, he's so chill. He's like, so chill. I think we could yeah, be buddies. Totally. Like, I don't it's have like, intention of, like, making out with him, although, like, I would if he wanted, but... 100%. Like, it's Harry Styles. But I also just feel like we could be friends. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a, that's a good one, especially right now, because um, that dude's just, like, I feel like always on my Twitter feed, you know? He's just the best. Have you listened to Fine Line lately? Not lately. I'm afraid to recommend I, that you listen to Cherry and to Falling, but I think you should. Falling's good. Have you listened to Cherry in a while? Nope. <sighs> have not. I, give it like another month and then do it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that, that about sums up our, uh, our, our day. We were saying, let's make it a short episode today. And we didn't. <laughs> and we did not. No. So um, send us your Spotify wrapped. Yes. Let us Falls know what Earth. celebrity you'd like to spend 30 minutes with. Wait. Yes. Yeah. And find us at Almost On Air on Instagram. Dude, what a close. What a close. We'll see you guys next week.